you horror nerds. I'm so excited to show you what is right here. Now I'm gonna try something different. I said, why not? So I normally buy DVDs when they normally, well, they don't really go on sale. They're normally like 20 bucks a shot, but um, these are the two DVDs that I'm adding to my collection. One of them is really like fairly recent that I really wanted anyways. So here we go. So these are two DVDs that I purchased from Cinema One and let's get into them. We'll start with the first one. So here we go, ba bam. So this is the Forever Purge. This is actually, this is actually was a disappointment overall as a film. I was really upset for it. Um, I've watched all the Purge movies to date, and they, the the all of them were really good, but this one just was a huge flop. I did not like it at all. Um, it wasn't as gory as I wanted it to be. There wasn't enough killing. Um, if you guys haven't seen the Purge movies, I'll give you a synopsis of them. So basically. Um, the Purge is uh, a one-year celebration where you can, you know, kill people for, for fun, get all that anger and that rage that you've been, like, you know, keeping inside you. And there's no, there's no emergency services, so no fire, no ambulance, no police, no nothing, and you can just go wild. You can kill your whole family if you want or your next-door neighbor, and you get away with it because it's, it, it, it's apparently, like, it's allowed. It's, like, it's, it's just for sport, basically. And they think that um, by you doing that, that the world would be a better place and it would help you out mentally. And it was more fucked up against the poor people and stuff like that. So basically the, the people who were in poverty, they were targeting and then they, they were selling, they were kid, like they were basically kidnapping the people and selling them to the rich. And then the rich would like get their jollies off and then they would kill them for fun. It was really fucked up, but yeah. So like overall the Purge movies were really good. Uh, but this one took a huge shit. And unfortunately, this one was the last one. And I'm like, <coughs> God damn. But yeah, so yeah, so that's that. Now, this one was, I'm actually really excited to show you. So here we go. Ba bam. So this is Scream 5. Obviously, you guys know Michael Myers is my top main man. But Ghostface is my second main killer. I love me some Ghostface. So this came out on DVD, I think, last month. And I picked it up for, like I said, 20 bucks. Not bad. And so I have mixed feelings about this film. So I actually didn't get to see it, unfortunately, um, on the big screen because we in Canada, uh, we have the whole COVID protocols where you have to be fully vaccinated in order to see the film. So I ended up uh, not being able to see it, which really sucked. Um, but I ended up finding a way of seeing it, obviously. Um, but yeah, so here's my mixed feelings about this. Overall, it was a good, it was a good film. It was really gory. It, it, it had a strong storyline. Now the shitty part was, is that I didn't like how, you know, Roger, Roger Jackson's voice, like who he voices Ghostface. He has like the most infamous lines ever, like very like gory, very like fucked up the shit that he says, but he was weak in this. I was really disappointed. I was like really hoping to hear some like wild stuff coming out of that guy's mouth and it really sucked. So that was kind of like the shitty point. And then, um, I'm not going to lie. I was really sad that they killed basically one of the main characters off. And I didn't even know how well, like how the film was going to go from here on out. Because when you watch the trailer, because they released like three different trailers and then they had Gail Weathers, right? Who plays, it was played by Courtney Cox. They had her like screaming bloody murder. And I'm like, oh, that, that can't, that can, that can only mean one thing. That means like David Arquette who plays Dewey dies. And then like, and I'm like, you know, I'll take the benefit of the doubt. Maybe someone else dies. Like if it's, if it's, if it's Nev Campbell, like Sydney Prescott I like I'm like I'm done right like you know no one wants her to die right no one wants any of them to die because they've been around since like since all five films right so basically when you see him you he he unfortunately dies spoiler alert it's really fucking it really sucks in my opinion I didn't cry I was really shocked I think I was more in shock factor then like and then like actual in tears and then the tears kind of like started to set in afterwards because I'm like wow they really just did that and then uh, it was just really sad because the guy actually survived all like all four films and this guy was fucking shot. He was stabbed. Like, yo, there's one time where you thought he was dead in number two because like the way that he was just like wiping the blood all the way down in like the soundproof room or whatever. I thought for sure he was dead, but no, he still kept on swinging. But it was really unfortunate the way he died. And um, I guess when going back and watching it, um, seeing someone else's review on it, they kind of called it in a way because um when he's talking to Sydney Prescott over the phone and he she, she's like take care of yourself and then there's kind of like that long pause 
people are like, yeah, he's getting it for sure. Like, and that kind of really sucked. But yeah, so he died. Um, I'm not going to spoil who the two killers are. I mean, in my opinion, I think the two killers were kind of weak. It was kind of cool going back. Uh, I, I think it's sad that Wes Craven wasn't a part of it, unfortunately. Um, but I think Wes Craven would have been proud. But the fact that they tied this film and went back to the original kills, which is the original feels, it was really cool. How they like were bringing the killers into uh, Stu Mocker's house. Which is, if you remember Stu Mocker's house, it was the like like the famous. He's one of the the main killers in the first one, as well as Billy Loomis. And I didn't even know this, guys. I, I didn't even know this. I was like, holy shit! Someone told me this, and I'm like, they're like, do you realize that he was just covered in makeup, and like he was CGI to look like young, like his younger self. I, I looked at it and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, when that girl was seeing visions of her father, right? Cause that was another spoiler alert. Sorry guys, um, spoiler alert. Like her father was um, Billy Loomis. And then when, when she was seeing flashbacks of him, that was fucking Skeet Ulrich, you guys. That was Skeet Ulrich reprising his role as Billy Loomis, but they CGI'd him to make him look younger. And then they put makeup on his face. And I was like, I'm like, no, I'm like, that can't be him. And then I'm like, holy fuck it is. Cause he's, he was showed in the credits. It was fucking wild I was like holy crap it, but people were speculating that the killer was going to be Stu Mocker himself because people were saying oh he's like yay he's like yay high whatever like you know he got stabbed in the kidney but he didn't like did he really die when th th them two were like you know getting their jollies off in the kitchen and stabbing each other so you didn't know but people were speculating that he was coming back but it kind of threw everybody for a loop but I didn't really like the two killers I thought it was stupid I thought it was like dumb but um it like and then when you killed when you killed Dewey off right and then like and then when like Sydney Prescott was in the house as well as Gail Weathers and I think she gets shot in in this one and you're like I'm like and then I was like in tears at that right I'm like I'm like are they really just gonna start killing everybody the fuck off right now I'm like is this, is this really how it's all gonna end they're just gonna just completely wipe out all three and then the way Sydney you know fought herself and like you know did the infamous kill that was fucking cool so I'm not gonna lie the, the kills overall were really good I liked how they brought it back to the setting of the original scream that was really nice um but again Week on week on the famous Roger Roger L Jackson lines, and it was week week on the killers and other people died as well. It was very unfortunate, but it kind of sucked. But it's whatever. But um, the good news is is that not even when this movie was actually released, they actually came out and said that Scream Scream Six is coming out next year, and that's fucking insane. I am so pumped for that. And then I don't know if um, Courtney Cox is coming back or Nev Campbell. But I know um, Hayden Panettiere, who played Kirby in uh, Scream 4, if you remember, she gets stabbed, but you never knew if she died or not. She's coming back to reprise her role, so that's fucking cool. So we'll see what season six is, you guys. But yeah, I think Wes Craven would have been proud. And the the like to close this completely off of like my final rant, the coolest thing is that they actually dedicated the film to Wes. So that was actually really nice. So yeah, so leave a like, leave a comment, um, tell me uh what did you think of scream five i have mixed feels on that you guys already heard about it if you guys start talking to me in the comment section i can like literally go on for days about this film i think it was a really good film overall all right leave a like leave a comment and ciao for now